Our express purpose within the prison system is to care for inmates spiritually and to those inside who have become believers in Christ to help them grow and mature in their faith. Policy does not inhibit this. We bring important spiritual care. That is our lane. Stay in the spiritual care lane. Policy permits us to share the love of Jesus with inmates. You are permitted to provide religious and spiritual care because it is required by law. In our work, abiding in policy will model obedience to authority and demonstrate to inmates the much needed respect for, for authority. You are a role model in many ways beyond your desire to share Christ. Trust me, you are being observed. Inmates can have a cynical view of security and administration. Therefore, it is important to show respect for all rules and regulations. Policy is in place to keep us from being in a situation that can mean our incrimination or being sued for negligence. Embrace the policies of the institution and know what they are. Policy serves as the guardrails put in place to keep you from overstepping boundaries. Policy can vary from facility to facility based on security level and local directives. One thing that is universal is that in the event of a security concern, you must comply with the directives of security and administration. For example, if religious service is taking place and a security person interrupts and says the service must end early and inmates must return to their housing, the only right answer is to comply immediately. If you are given instructions by a security personnel, comply respectfully and, and immediately. Do not ever argue with security. Just do what they ask you with respect. Recognize their authority. Security and safety can override any of the prison's activities from religious gatherings, education, and programming. So that you are prepared, let's talk about entering a prison. When you enter a prison, you will be scrutinized by security. This is not something to take personally. Prisons are always dealing with contraband being smuggled into the facility through those coming in from outside. It is security's job to detect and prevent these things from coming in. You represent an opening for outside materials to enter the prison. Make sure you know what is allowed and what is not allowed in the facility. There are some things which are completely normal to possess in society, but carry high level charges in a prison. For instance, inmates can receive a high-level charge for having a cell phone. When entering a prison, all of your possessions will need to be scanned by an x-ray machine and a security officer will search through your possessions. Each facility is different in regard to how they conduct body searches. My particular setting requires me to pass through a full body x-ray scan in order to enter. If for some reason you cannot pass through a metal detector or be x-rayed, you will need to inquire about the alternatives in place at the facility you are entering. For instance, some volunteers with pacemakers may not be able to go through an x-ray because the magnets may interfere with the device. One of our chaplains has many fragments of metal in his body from wounds sustained in combat many years ago. He will always set off alarms. In such cases, the person will need a letter from their doctor and must inquire with the prison administration on how they can be searched to enter the facility. When you enter a corrections facility, there will most likely be a dress code. This dress code is in place to keep your attire different from the inmate population. Trust me, in an emergency, you do not want to look like an inmate. In many settings, volunteers are not allowed to wear jeans and are told not to wear a specific color, like white or blue, for example. The different attire will allow security to identify you and differentiate you from inmates as necessary. Also for women who may be entering men's facilities, there's an expectation of no skinny jeans or spandex or other revealing attire. I've, a wit I've witnessed women visitors being turned away from their scheduled visits because their attire did not fit policy. As Christian chaplains and volunteers, we should understand and respect these guidelines and not want to attract the wrong kind of attention from inmates. Frankly, that should be true on the outside as well. 
Remember, when you are entering a prison facility, it is almost the equivalent of entering a military base. We enter the facility as civilians, but all around us are officers of different ranks and duties. As civilians, we may be unaware of these structures, but they are what upholds order within the prison system. Therefore, it is important to not assume our rights within the facility. We are there at the permission and discretion of the warden. I encourage you to take on the posture of a learner when entering a prison. Ask questions and don't assume that you know what is acceptable in the environment. Being well-versed in policy is important and can prevent embarrassing moments where you might be corrected by an officer. And if you are, be respectful, humble, and compliant. When relating to prison security, the best policy is to be kind, respectful, and attentive. Often security officers work long hours and are exhausted from their heavy workloads. We must be sure that our interaction with security is of the highest quality. If you notice someone is looking tired, be kind to them and thank them for the service they provide in the prison. At most facilities, you will encounter employees who are feeling low. When you notice this, always say a word of encouragement and be ready to respond if they want to share on how they are doing. Again, if a security officer gives you a directive, we must respectfully submit to their request. If we're not able to take directives from the prison staff, we're going to have a very difficult time serving within the prison. If you bristle or resist commands of people in authority, you should not serve in this setting. As those who bring spiritual care to the prison, it should be our objective to care for the security officers. This can go a long way in improving the environment of the prison. Security officers can feel forgotten and burn out because of the high demands of their jobs. Find a creative way to show the security guards you care for them. One of the ministry teams I know of regularly provides cookies just to love on the guards. Of course, this is well received. Who doesn't love cookies? Christian volunteers and chaplains must remember that every person is valuable in the sight of God. Even if we're coming to the prison for the express purpose of ministering to inmates, we also have an amazing opportunity to impact the lives of security guards by living out the gospel in front of them. And as lives are changed and violence is reduced, they will appreciate your work regardless of their own beliefs. Who knows how this will influence them? When entering the prison, you will need to pass through a system of locked doors, which are controlled by secu security. In my work setting, I pass through five doors that need to be unlocked in order for me to enter and lock behind me as I pass through. This can take some time to get used to if you're unfamiliar with being in a prison. Not everyone deals well with this feeling of being locked in. I know of one volunteer who was so irked by the experience of being locked inside the prison that they never came back to the facility. As a volunteer, your mobility within the prison will be limited to the area where programming is held. It is very rare for volunteers, volunteers to be allowed into the housing units where inmates live. It might be beneficial, if possible, to receive a tour of one of the housing units so that you can see the spaces where inmates reside in your specific facility. It is educational to see the living spaces, called pods, to get a first-hand view of where inmates live. Many facilities have shared cells occupied by two inmates. Some inmates who have been charged free for a long time can qualify for a single cell. Other facilities are dorm style with inmates living on bunks in an open space. Each of these housing arrangements present challenges for inmates as they try to create a predictable life in prison. As a result of ministry and serving inside, some prisons allow for a separate dorm for Christians to live together. Such dorms are typically more respectful and peaceful than others. In these special housing units, inmates must earn the right with credible evidence of belief and changed life. As a volunteer, it is important to know what space you are authorized to be in. 
Prisons can be large maze-like facilities with redundant architecture. Therefore, you will want to pay attention to your surroundings. It took me a few weeks to be completely comfort comfortable moving through my facility. It will take you time as well. Finally, remember, being in the prison environment is an absolute privilege. I know it's a funny th way to think about it, but it is a privilege and it can be taken away if not respectfully treated. As chaplains and volunteers, we want to keep the door of the prison open so that we can bring the love of Jesus into the prison. Therefore, we walk wisely in relation to policy and security.